through the net mesh and it's caught around the gills. So as it tries to wiggle through the net, that's, that's why it's called gill net because the fish is, ca is caught around its gill. Then the next kind of net is the CN net. These are smaller mesh size than the gill net and it's capable of collecting all the fishes in the pond at once because the size is small so it can catch both the small and the big fishes without escaping. But in this thin nets, the nets are, they usually have what we call a lead sinker or weight that is attached to the bottom rope, which hold the nets at the bottom of the pond so that the fish cannot escape underneath the net as they are put. So when you put it, the fish can't escape. The nets also have floats attached to the top rope to help the net form an enclosure. Then, Sea net is not just used when you take it in your hand, no. It is used with fishing trawlers. You, it is attached to fishing trawlers. But a fishing trawler or fishing trawlers are, is a fishing boat in which you attach sea nets. So, and it is used for deep sea harvesting. You use it to harvest large fishes. The next fishing tool is fishing baskets. Fishing basket is designed like a basket with a cylindrical shape and a wide mouth. It has teeth that are close to its mouth and is tapered at the end. A cone is like it's cone-like in shape. So that is where the 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 teeth or the apex is where you have the bait which attract the fish. And when it enters the basket, the trigger is pulled down as the body of fish touches it, just like a trap and it closes the mouth of the basket so it's just like a trap when an animal gets into the trap the, the trigger just catches the animal so that's something like that, so, that like what we have in a fishing basket then the last um, fishing tool that we're talking about is the simplest one and it's like it's ancient in nature it is hook and line Hook and line is a long wooden, it has a long wooden handle, a long line, a rope or twine with a float and a hook. Then attached to the hook is a bait that is fixed. So it's the bait that attracts the fish. The attempt of the fish to take the bait, the bait can either be a smaller fish, an earthworm, or a small animal that the fish will want to feed on. By the time the bait opens, the fish open its mouth to take the bait in, the hook just gets into its throat and it, it just cuts. That's just the simple method or the process of using hook and line. Now, we'll be talking about apiculture. Apiculture is the maintenance of bees colony and we commonly find bees in hives. So the art of maintenance of honey bee by humans for the purpose of producing honey and wax is called apiculture, or rather we say the art of cultivating honey bees to produce honey and wax. It is also an art and science of domesticating bees for production of products such as honey and wax. An apiarist, or what we call a beekeeper, a beekeeper is an apiarist, is the one that keeps the bees in order to collect honey and other products of the hive, such as bee wax, propolis, pollen, royal products, royal jelly, to pollinate crops or to produce the bees for sale and other bee products. So the person that keeps bee is called an apiarist. Then apiary is also called bee yard. Apiarist is the person that keeps it, but the yard where you keep bee is called apiary is a location where bees are kept then we will talk about the types of bees majorly we have two types of bees we have the indigenous bees and the exotic bees indigenous bees are the local bees they are commonly found in the local environment and are majorly of african origin they have smaller body size smaller eyes they have low productive ability they have lower growth rate compared to the exotic bees now and they also have low honey and wax production. 
they are not very economical in terms of commercial production because of this low, low, low that I've been mentioning, low height, low growth rates, low honey and wax production. So they are not economical in commercial production. And an example of an indigenous bee is the African black bees. Now the second kind of bee is what is called the exotic bees. These are bees that are imported from other countries into West Africa. They are capable of interbreeding and hybridizing. They are majorly used by bee breeding companies. So they are majorly used for commercial purposes. And examples of exotic bees, we have the Western honey bee, also called Apis mellifera, Italian bee called Apis mellifera lingosta, then the European dark bee is called Apis mellifera mellifera, while the Canyolan bee is called Apis mellifera canica. Then the last example there is the Mediterranean bee called Epi serana, Epi serana. So those are the examples of the exotic bees. They are foreign to Africa, so they are imported into the country and are majorly used by the company, a bee producing company or only producing company on a large scale or a commercial basis or for commercial purposes. Then why do we need to keep bees first for income generation? You know. You must have bought only before you've seen somebody bought only before. So when you keep bees, you generate money, you sell your only, and money can come into you as an APRS. Then the second one is that it's a source of food. You can have it in place of eating sugar. It's it's very, very beneficial to your body than sugar. So it provides us with food. That is only then employment. The apiaries can employ other people to join him or her, him or her on the in the apiary so that they will help him to generate more force in working. So that is why it's a source of employment. People are employed into the apiary to work, to collect honeybees, to make sure the place is conducive for the honeybees to produce their honey and wax. Then it is also for industrial purpose. Products of bee of honey bees are used for cosmetic production. Then the wax, you know, when I was defining apiculture, I was mentioning for the purpose of producing honey and wax. So another importance of keeping bee is for wax production. E.g., our candy, our candy, you know, candy is made up of wax. So you can get your wax for producing candy from the honey bee. Then for medicinal purpose, honey is a very, very good source of medicine. It is natural and it's very, very, it's highly recommended for a lot of medicine. Then crop production. Bees help in pollinating our plants, transferring in their own process of feeding, feeding on nectar of the flower. They transfer pollen grains from answer to stigma in their own activity. So they help in our crop production. What are the methods of keeping bees? Majorly we have two methods of keeping bees. The first is the traditional method, while the other is the modern beekeeping method. In the traditional method, the only bees are allowed to remain in their natural habitat. And the natural home for only bee is a hollow tree, a log, or a cave. So they are left in the traditional method, they are left in their natural habitat. So they don't even know there is a, they are living their own normal life. They don't know anything is happening to them. They are just living naturally. They are not kept in, in a cage or they are kept somewhere, brought, changing their location. They are not, their location is not changed. They are left in their natural habitat. Then the only bee build a nest only in locations which are dry and protected from the wind and sunlight. So the only bee in its natural location finds a place that is dry and is kept from wind and sunlight. Then when the apiaries wants to gather or harvest only bee from the wild bee colony, it does it by subduing the bees with smoke. And breaking open the tree or rocks where the colony is located. This often 
result in physical destruction of the nest because by the time you bring smoke to their nest, you destroy the nest, but then you get your honey. Under this system, the honey production is very, very low. Then to the modern bee keeping method, it's a method that is used currently in today's apiculture, that is today's art of rearing bee. That is what is used. The exotic bees. They ensure high production of honey and other products. So you use in modern beekeeping, you use the exotic breeds. You know, I told you about the exotic breeds that they are the ones that are foreign to West Africa. So they are imported into the into the country and they are of higher value, higher growth rates than higher rates of honey and wax production. Then in keeping the bee in a modern system. The bees are forced to build a straight comb in a wooden frame by giving them a piece of wax called foundation on which the bases of cells were already embossed. You know, in this method, it's like you are conditioning the bees. You are conditioning them to behave in a particular pattern for your own purpose. While in the indigenous or traditional method, you you don't do anything to them, you just leave them in their natural habitat until the time you want to gather your honey or you want to harvest it. So that's the difference. Then, the bees, after you have put the foundation in place, the bees use these bases, that is the foundation, to build the honey comb. The cells of, the cells of which are used for both rearing brood and for storing honey. So the cells of these bases that you have given them in the honey comb, they are used for brooding and for storing, storing their honey. When a hive of